So we're going to be talking about um, the iPad or, or mobile tools, and, and I'm only going to be speaking mainly because the iPad, because that's my experience, but as uh, technology continues to go, other um, applications, I don't know if we have any more handouts. Do we have any more handouts? Yes. More handouts. Um, as technology continues to grow, you know, other devices, they're becoming, um, uh, you know, they're talking to each other a lot more. So, but we're going to be talking about the iPad in particular, and I really believe that the iPad and these mobility devices, um, I don't think there's an industry better suited to use them than, than our industry. Uh, when you think about being able to do contracts, store information, uh, video, photos, mobility out on the road, um, our days change from hour to hour, so always have that flexibility is a, is a huge advantage. So first of all, I just want to say some ground rules uh, for, for the presentation today. Number one, I don't want to hear uh, you're younger and you grew up with it. Um, I was in real estate before I sent my very first email. My job as an assistant in a real estate office at 15 years old was to open up the catalog and to update the catalog. This is sold. And, and so the technology is new to all of us and it's just your ability to adapt it. And where I think technology is for um, realtors in the real estate industry is a huge opportunity. And I was talking to a business guy the other day when we were talking about some marketing things and we sort of came up with an analogy. It was where we are as far as realtors and technology. I think it's a lot like surfing, and there's a wave on us right now, and you can paddle like crazy and catch the wave and only paddle for a couple minutes, and it's going to be awesome, and the wave will do most of the work, or that wave will go by, and no matter how hard you paddle, you'll never, ever catch up. And I kind of think that's where we are with technology because our society is going mobile, and our society is our client. So this is not, you know, we haven't chosen this. This is a society wants this to happen, <coughs> so we have to um, adapt to that. Um, ask tons of questions in a group this big. Sometimes the questions can get overwhelming. We will be taking uh, a break at, half, at an hour, and then afterwards I'll stay behind and answer questions. But I know there's a couple of people who have taken this presentation before. Bob's been here, and Steve's been here, and... Um, we're not going to teach you the ins and outs of all these applications and how to use it. It just can't happen in two hours. So the hopes is to get you to realize, yeah, this is something that I have to implement to my business, and then we'll take it sort of the next level afterwards. And I've made an offer every presentation I've ever given. If you ever want to phone, you know, call me and ask me questions, you want to get together for lunch, you want to come up to the office, whatever you want. I'm always going to be available for you guys afterwards, so um, take that. So as far as comfort level, who owns an iPad already? All right, so most of the room. And who's using it in their business day to day? Okay. Um, and um, I think that's about it. So talk about a little bit about the history of how I got, we became um, um, mobile or paperless in particular. Uh, about eight years ago, a new technology called Realty Nuance was brought to our table. Um, that's adapted throughout uh, Remax Little Oak. And uh, myself and four other agents were the guinea pigs for a year before its initial release. And once we got our hands on that, we realized that we didn't actually need to have an office in the office anymore because we only really had that for the filing cabinet sharing with my team. Um, so our filing cabinet was able to go on online. And then about five years ago, uh, we became, I don't know why that went out. We became um, paperless when we started using um, HP tablets and using a, an application out of, uh, out of Denver. And then when the iPad came along, it took it to a whole new level. So we've been paperless for over five years now, completely paperless. Um, the odd time our client wants paper, but that's very, very rare. And the advantage for us to be paperless is enormous in time and, and efficiency. And our clients, I think, end up having a way better experience because of it too as well. So it's one of those uh, win-wins. So the first application I want to show you, uh, it's not on your list, but just to sort of prove a point, is an application called Tourist. And it's a great application. You can kind of go all over the world and um, see cool things. If you want to remember what it's like to be at a certain street corner in, uh, in France, you can do it. But I just want to show you, I've shot this on a... Uh, my iPhone the other day, so it's not professional. Where are we? Where's Fortnite? <laughs> anyway, so this is um, this is our uh, this is our office in Fort Langley. If you if you haven't been there before, but when we mean we can adapt this technology to be paperless, there's no filing cabinets, there's no desk drawers, there's no Nothing. This is we've built a, a coffee shop slash art gallery where we can use this technology to really create an environment 
that's uh, great for our clients. We use it for meetups and, and client get-togethers. And that's that's it. That's the office. That is very cool. And um, so this is shot on my iPhone, and you can upload these for your for your listings and that sort of stuff. But I just did that really uh, really quickly. But just to show you the 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 amazing part about this technology is that's our office. That's how much we've integrated it into our business. So let's start going through the list. Number one on the list for applications is an application called Evernote. I think it's one of the most important applications out there. And so I know that this the chance of this being filmed. I've hidden a lot of my files, so it's kind of bare. Um, but we, you can use Evernote for, for any way you want. But basically, Evernote is on your iPad, your iPhone, your PC at home, everywhere you have internet access. And it stores your notes and, and categorizes them any way you want so that they're, they're always available. So how you want to use that is up to you. But if I take a picture of you and you have a t-shirt that says Hawaii on it, and I remember, and I type in Hawaii, it'll search through even photos of t-shirts and pull up anything relating with that information. So it makes it searchable. But show you one of the reasons how, one of the ways that I use it, for an example, when we're doing showings of properties, um, my client has the iPad and they've got the list of those things and they've got my stylus and they're writing notes, which then we will email them to them at the end of the, at the, end of the uh, showing. So I'm walking around with my iPhone, which has Evernote on it. And so just to give you an example of one of the ways we, um, we use it, and so what I do is when I'm setting up the showings, I've emailed um, a list of all the properties that I'm showing that day, and it just automatically goes into Evernote. So that's what I'm showing that day. So I always have record of that going backwards. And then, um, and then as I'm going through the house, when I get to the front door, I just simply put in the address on my iPhone click a photo of the property, and then I walk through the property with my client, standing right next to him with my iPhone. And we take audio notes of our tour. So if we, if there's anything that particularly he wants to remember, I'll take a photo of it. If there's any comments that he wants to, 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 to know, you can simply just do the audio. So I'll give you an example. It should play through. Uh, main floor consists of a living room with open uh, soaring ceilings up to the second floor, a fairly tight eating area, and then a uh, kitchen with granite countertops. Uh, quite a few cracked tiles in the kitchen and there's some damage on the laminate floors. So that goes through, we go through all that, and then at the end of the, at the, end of the time that I'm showing that property, when I get back in the car, drop them off, uh, back at home, that's emailed off to the him uh, or the client before they get home. So they have all the details of the stuff they saw that day, they've got their written notes, they've got photos, and they've got audio, and it's not adding any time to my to my showing. You know, it's I'm doing it while I'm going along. And it's good record for me too as well. So how you use Evernote, but that's not that's ex uh, accessible from anywhere. So let me show you another cool thing about Evernote. You've got an email that you want to remember. So this is an email that came in the other day, and I want to pop that into my Evernote account. Uh, I simply have every Evernote account you have your own particular email address. So you just take that email address and you put it into your contacts and you, you just name it Evernote. So I want this to be put into my iPad folder. I can just simply uh, forward that off, include the attachments. And then here where the subject line is, so let's send that off to Evernote. E. It should just pop open. There's my Evernote account. And then at the end, if I tag it, I know the name of the, the folder I want it to go into there. So I want it to go into the iPad folder. So I go at iPad, and then I can hashtag searchable terms too as well, so I can search it later on. And then I send that out. And that automatically is gone, and that's already filed away in that folder. So for the client, you want to remember something, or you want to do anything, that's filed away. Likewise, if you're on the internet, and you're um, <coughs> looking around, so here's the, the, the meetup site for today. Oh, um, let's go into this. And let's say this is a web page of information that I want to remember, I want to store for later on. You can make a bookmark up there. It's really easy to do. A, it's an HTML code. Uh, a bookmark. And just click on Evernote. And on your iPad, it'll automatically open up how you want to store this information. So that, that will come up. Oh, I'm going to sign into Evernote. You're probably going to see my password. <laughs> no, you won't. I'll go <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> I don't know why it is that. Nigger? Oh, they're down for now. They're Are they down? 
It was just very, very cool. Um, there we go. So, so it just pulls up, and I can add my tags that I want to in the text that I want to, and then I can just pick. I want that to go into that iPad folder. So it automatically goes on the iPad folder, and I can like, just save the URL to that page, but that URL could change, just like a blog. That information could change, or I could clip the full page so that information is, is, is done. So I want to do both, and I just quickly press save those things, and it's preparing the note, and it's off. So that's done. So if we go back into Evernote and go into my notebooks and go into my iPad notes, there they are. So there's how to use your iPad. There's that email that I just sent there, and it's done. And then all of this is searchable. Every little bit of that is searchable. So it's a great way of creating all the things that you're not putting into VBC, all those things, all the contracts, all the other stuff for your clients to sort of put away. You see something, an article. If you're creating content for blogs, you can easily just push that stuff away. I think Evernote's a really powerful tool. iPhone, iPad, Android, it's all the way around. How you use it uh, will differ, and that's just to scratch the surface of, uh, of Evernote. Um, the next big app that, that, that we use is Dropbox. Who uses Dropbox? Almost um, everyone in the room, we understand how Dropbox works. Uh, Dropbox, one of the really neat things about Dropbox is collaboration for me. So because I'm on a team of, of, of three of us, um, these folders where you're sharing that information, um, so David, Rochelle, and I have a Dropbox back and forth. So if I want to send them a video that I want them to sign off on or a, a flyer or something like that, it just goes in there, it shows up on his computer. So Dropbox's ability to store a lot of information, Google Drive is becoming a lot more popular and as it gets integrated into more and more applications, Google Drive will be a, a great application tool as well. But here's a place where you can store all your stuff. Now, I used to store all my blank contracts under blank contracts. So I would store all my contracts for the entire year. So I would take a listing presentation, uh, an offer to purchase. I'd fill out everything that wasn't going to change, my name, on my where I work, and I'd store them in there. What Web Forms is now integrated, thankfully, into iPad, so we don't have to do that anymore. So it's a great place to just having those files that you want to have access mm -hmm. from, from anywhere to pop in. I put it on my iPad, it shows up on my desktop, it shows up on my iPhone, it's everywhere I want it to be. So Dropbox, if you've ever, ever emailed yourself something, and we've all done that, that's what Dropbox does. It eliminates ever having to email yourself something ever again. Um, we've all done that, and that was the original Dropbox using our Google inbox, our Gmail inbox as, um, as storage. So um, that really brings us on to starting to getting into contracts. Um, and so now Web Forms, is completely integrated into iPad. So if you open up, and I've given yourself the link, if you put that link into the address bar, uh, webforms.realtorlink.ca, webforms, and then you click this icon right here, the arrow icon, you just add it to your home screen, and it'll make it like an application on your home screen of your iPad. So then once it's there, then you end up having this Web forms there, touch bases there. I can upload all my web images now. So if you are taking images, you don't have to go back to the office. Um, and then your Sentry Lock's on there too as well. That's on my iPhone. So Web Forms now becomes my application. And um, yeah, you just no option. Those select probes. Yes, there is. I don't know what the password. What's the Wi-Fi password here? Champion One. Champion One. You're going to keep it on just a little bit longer. I don't want to show all my files on for the internet. <laughs> I'd show it everyone in the room. But. Just a second. Is it the summit one? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay, and you're good. Champion one. Yeah. So this is Web Forms. I've gone in just like you would. I've logged on and I've chosen a file, right? Just I want to edit a file. I've chosen a multiple listing contract. So this is on my iPad. So I can go through. Um, I'm meeting with a client and I thought we were just having coffee and then you realize it's a listing presentation. You've ever been in that situation where now all of a sudden you're listing at home? On your iPad, you're tethering through, hopefully through your phone and you're not buying a, a, a 3G or a 4G iPad. But you can simply see that it is just touched edited just like this so we're going to remax is the seller 
and we're going to list the property down here. And this is the great part about, actually, I'll, I'll, I'll leave that to the end. So you go through, you're going to fill this out as best you can. Some things you might not be able to fill out yet because you haven't met with your client. Then you're just going to simply click the download icon, and you can have two options. You can lock it to make sure it's read only, or you can make it so it's still editable. You still want editable. Editable? <laughs> Edible. Edible. Uh, you still want to make it that thing, so you go ahead and press cancel because all the, f the things aren't done. And it's going to pull up into a, a web browser, which then you can um, pop it onto your iPad. So, um, and that brings us really to the next application, which is uh, PDF Expert, which is the sort of foundation as far as contracts go. That's the application we use the absolute most. Wi Fi is hanging on us. I think a bunch of people might have just joined. A bunch of people's ruining for everyone else. Oh, I got three <laughs> bars. But there we go. So now it's going to open another one. And every everywhere you see on your I, iPad, when you have options, in the upper right-hand corner, you can choose what application you want to open in, right? So you can choose to open this document in all these different applications. And we'll go through a lot of them. But we want to open in PDF Expert. So we're going to go ahead and open that document in PDF Expert. And so now it's sucking it on, and now it's on my iPad. So now it's <laughs> offline. You can get off the internet, and now you can do this. So now this document is uh, on my iPad, and now I'm sitting with the client going through the final little details. So there you go. Still, I can still edit it. So we'll go in list price. Now it's on my iPad. I go ahead and put it on list price, and we want to go 550. And still, same thing would work. Still, the, the commas will go in, and, and, and then the numbers, and all that sort of stuff. So you just press it, and it's done. So now I'm meeting the client. We're ready to go. <coughs> Pop out the stylus pen. Go down to the bottom. Choose my pen. I want it to be black. There, it's initialed. It's done. Wow. Right now, now if it's a listing contract, now I'm going to send it off. Just arrow button. Uh, by email too. Now you want to flatten that copy. You don't want to make sure the other agent can move it. So we always want to flatten our PDFs on the way out from when we've done it, but when we've finished it. So it goes up to, as a flattened copy, and it goes right up to the email box. Now, mm. I'm going to send this off to my email account. Okay, now here's the advantage of being paperless. We use Realty Nuance. Thankfully, uh, Remax Little Oak use uh, where we came from, we used Realty Nuance. Every single time a contract leaves my hands, it's blind seed seed into Realty Nuance. Your work is done, right? So you're sitting with a client and you're doing a listing presentation. I'm going to email the client. I'm going to email Remax Little Oak Biz <coughs> Listings, and I'm going to email Realty Nuance. When I'm done leaving, standing up from that table at the listing presentation, I'm done. It's already off to Remax. It's already off into Realty Nuance, and the client has a copy of it. I never have to go back to the office. And then I go back and it's all stored. So every single time I negotiate an offer, every single time it comes in, it goes in a nuance, nuance time, time stamps it. Well, I know exactly when it came in, when it went out. If I ever So through an offer, I'll have seven as the offers go back and forth with no effort, with no effort. So it always gets blind CC'd out to Realty Nuance, which is really the cornerstone still of being paperless. Um, so I send that off. That contract goes off. So let's go look. Would it be like if someone's sending me a contract and how will you use PDF Expert? So go into my uh, email. Email's there. There's the form I want to do. I'm downloading some. We also use something called uh, MyFax. So if you're not a, a paperless agent or not a digital agent, you send me a fax, it comes to my email. So I never have to go to my fax machine. You, I've got a fax number, you send it to me, it comes to my email. So now this is the contract we have, right? With 550, it's locked now. I simply touch the top corner. I say open in, PDF expert. Now it's coming back to me. And so this is, we'll say that this is an offer to purchase, right? So 550 no longer works for us. We're just gonna take that pen. We're gonna cross that off. This is probably a little bit crude. Uh, take a box, put initials in there, grab a pen with my client, sign it off. Done. Email out to the other agent into Realty Nuance or wherever it needs to go. That's how you negotiate a contract. And you can you want to add in. Let's see where there's a there's a form here. Um, sorry, Michael. If you could stand back a little, I think the people over here can't see. Oh, what sorry, Bob. Sorry. Bob's already <laughs> taking the presentation. Um, <laughs> so like likewise, if you're doing an offer, 
and there's somewhere where you want to add some information to as well. Here you can take in text, right? And so you could add another subject clause, right? So that would just go in there like that. You'd add in your subject clause. You'd put your signature box in there, and the other people are going to be circles. And it gets signed, and that obviously that's crude, and that gets sent off. So you can really go through and edit that and never touch anything. Once again, once it leaves uh, PDF Expert, it's, uh, it's locked, and you send a copy to new ones. Now, I go one step further. I sign my documents in the next application called um, Notes by Nuance. And one of the reasons why I sign my documents in Notes by Nuance, and this is a personal thing, I'll show you when I do a signature. So that's my signature, let's say. The problem with this application is I can do this with your signature, right? I can cut and paste it now. I'm your agent. I'm not going to do that for you. But I can manipulate that. Notes by nuance. The moment that pen touches that screen, it can't be moved, can't be resized, can't be changed, can't be anything. PDF Expert, a lot of people use it. It's great. It's legal. It's, everything's fine. I take a next step. I just go open in, flatten copy. I choose Notes by Nuance. It doesn't, for whatever reason, show up uh, through Mirror. Notes by Nuance, same program, sign off, and it's done. I just do that one extra step. It's no more time to do it. And from there, I send it off, CC a copy into Virtual Business Center, and so on and so forth. Any questions on that stuff? Is Notes by Nuance an app? It is an application free. And, and Eric, um, by the way, Evernote free, Dropbox free, PDF Expert 999, Notes by Nuance free. So, so far, we're in it for nine bucks. <laughs> Ten bucks. Notes by nuance. Why again? Instead of PDF? Um, just because you can't change the signature. The moment you sign the signature, that signature can't be moved. And, and, and not that I'm saying I have a higher. I just it makes me feel comfortable that my client knows that I didn't go and cut and paste and I moved their signature around. It's just. I mean, we have eSign now, right? Which is a, a, an IP address. But you know, I feel more comfortable when I know that it can't be moved. That's more of a personal issue. Uh, the, it's, it's great. Notes by nuance is the same. Paper port notes. Is yeah, it? paper port notes. Yeah, yeah. Notes is just the company. Paper port notes. Yeah. So the next that brings us to VBC, which is the same thing. Um, oh, sorry, quick question. Yeah. The last one with notes by nuance. When you're when you're moving your document into that, you're moving into the app. You don't have to be online still. No, nope, right into the app. Okay. Yeah. And everyone understands tethering on their cell phone. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Good. Um, so the next, so the next, what? Is that all you use is tether? You don't have any 3G or anything? I have nothing on, on, as long as I've got this phone near me, that's all, that's all I need. And that phone's, this is, really, this is my, this is, this is every contract I've done in the last eight years is on here. Every file, every photo, video, everything we've done is here. So wherever this thing is, 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 I have a client call me up a couple of years ago and says, hey Mike, I'm in refinancing, I need a site survey certificate from the deal we did three years ago. I, pulled over the side of the road and got on Realty Nuance, which is next, and, and sent it to them. So Realty Nuance is next. Once again, I've created an application on my desktop by just doing that desktop thing. We all, if those are familiar with Realty Nuance, the only thing you can't do on Realty Nuance on your iPad is fill out a deal sheet and post a document. Otherwise, you can go in there, you can go in the inbox, you can receive information. So at night when I get home, and it's 9.30 at night and I got these five documents, I just quickly post them away or I call Jordan and she posts them. That's the only downfall. They're working on it right now, but you have full access on your iPad to Realty Nuance for the things you need during the day when you're out on the road. You have all your documents, all your clients' information, everything on there, all your past stuff. Nuance is there. It's an amazing um, foundation for what we do. Um, iBooks. iBooks is, um, I use it more on my, my uh, my uh, iPhone and my the, my iPad, but they're um, they're cloud together. So um, when we do a, when I put something in iBooks, and iBooks has two sides two sides to it. It has um, has your books, and then has your PDFs. So on the back part of your bookshelf is all your PDFs. Um, I'll try to show you what I, what I do. Um, that's one of one. That's not a good example. Um, one of one. Try and show you when I was out showing some stuff. So here we go. So this is back of Fred's stuff. Um, so this is in, in iBooks. It's on my iPhone. I'm going to go show the house. The client says to me, what's the square footage? I don't have paper. I have the, 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 the information here. On my phone, I can click the phone number. I can email straight from the phone. But what I do is I put at the top of it the information, you know, with showing, lockbox, railing information, all that just goes in because I've just put that in through PDF Expert. I've, e I've put it to iBooks. 
So my clients walks around with this information where they can write notes on it, and I've got it on my iPhone. So as I get up to the front door, I just look on my iPhone, I know where the lockbox is, I know the code, if I need to call the realtor, it's there. Why iBooks and why not PDFX, but why don't you just save it all in there? Could just because the of clouds. Because if I make a change on one, it goes to the other. PDF expert isn't clouding. I mean, you. Once again, I could learn a thousand things from all of you guys from what you, how you use it. This is just how I use it, and it's that cloud aspect of it is not having to send it more than one place. Um, if I change something in PDF expert on my iPad, it doesn't go to my iPhone. So using those Apple products is, is the advantage. Um, so I use iBooks for that and, and keeping keeping uh, that stuff together. Um, next application that will be part of our Vegas presentation, and actually I, the guy I'm doing the Vegas presentation with is a guy from New Jersey, awesome guy. I told him about this application, he went out and got it, and he got a listing because of, because of it on day one. So this is an example of, of Notes Plus, and this is how we use it. Um, I've got horrible handwriting, as you can see, I'm glad that's on video. Um, but what, what, um, what Notes pl Plus is, is your ability to take notes, um, and, and a whole lot more than that. So I use Notes Plus for my pre-listing walkthrough. Uh, and so one of the advantages of Notes Plus is when you hold down your pen on, on, the, on the page, it asks you for a close-up box. So now wherever that gray box is, is actually where I'm going to be writing on the lower box. So I can write a lot more efficiently. Uh, bedroom, see once again, horrible writing, is 12 by 32. That's a big one. Uh, you know, information <laughs> as I go through. But what I really use it for is when I'm doing that pre-listing uh, walkthrough with a client, I say to the client, hey, can you take me a walkthrough of your property and show me, you know, the, everything about the property? He says, yeah, okay, then there's no problem. I said, can we record our walkthrough? Yeah, sure, no problem. I just simply press the microphone button. Now that's recording our conversation as he's walking us through the property. All right. So recording everything. We got crown moldings and we put them in the hot hot water tank in 1995, and we did this at this time, and all that information is done. <coughs> now I also go through, and I see something that is either going to be a hindrance to the value of the property or a plus to the value of the property. I simply insert a photo of the bad whatever. There we go, my iPad. <laughs> uh, and then that's done. I use that, and that gets popped into the note. And it's there, and I'm writing notes as I go through, and it's recording everything I'm saying. And I go ahead and press finish record, and here you go. Go back, and you can go back and see those those recordings. So the microphone get, button. Now that's recording our conversation as he's walking us through the property. Right. All right. So, so that's all of that. We got crown moldings, and we put in the hot hot water tank in 1995, and. Okay, that's it. So I go through, and once again, now that I got that note done. I can simply send that off to Evernote into their file. I've got those photos, I've got that write-up, I've got that audio. So when I'm going back and now I'm doing the listing, and I go, okay, well, did it have crown molding or it didn't have crown molding? Did it have hardwood floors and what were they three quarter inch? Thing? Yeah, I've got the audio notes I can go through. If I see anything, I just say, oh, you've got three quarter inch, hard, you know? And the attention to detail that that homeowner perceives you having or actually having is great. You're not going to miss a thing. So that's on there. Notes Plus is a great application and it has a ton of value. Once again, all the things that we're doing mobile-wise, you're doing that walkthrough anyway. You're spending that 15 minutes to take a couple photos and to do the audio notes. It's no more effort. It's just like same thing with the Evernote with the showings. No extra effort. Makes you look super professional and, um, and really pays off. Um, next, so, so you would file this note in Evernote. In Evernote, not keep it in Note Plus. Yeah, no, get just it out. Just for taking it. Yeah, just taking it because I can't find it here. You know what I mean? Evernote is once it's filed away and it's done, and I know the client's name, last name, so I just simply email and write at you know Finley, and it just goes into that account. So then, would you have a client file in uh, Evernote? Yeah, every one of my clients. And client stuff goes. Every clients I have, and it, uh, it just dump it in there, and then when I need it later on, I know where it is. I might never ever use it again. But I dump it in the client file under their last name. So when I send that email off, I just at their last name and it's filed. I don't have to go and ever know, file it later on or fool around with it. That information's there, it's done. And now I go and I and I'm, say if I'm at my office, I don't have my iPad with me or whatever at my office, Evernote, pull it up, it's there. It's wherever I want to be. Do you have to physically create folders in Evernote? Yeah. Okay. Two seconds. Right. Yeah. Just add, boom, done. So uh, in Evernote's in the cloud. Yeah. This yeah. Notes you plus. Email. 7.99 is that the right app? Uh, it looks like yeah, looks like that. Like that. Is it 7.99? Yeah. yeah. Uh, I think I got it for like 1.99 when it first got released. 
<laughs> much promotion. See, that wave is coming. It's starting to get more expensive. Um, and you can't do that just right in Evernote? You no, you can't. You can not You can do Evernote. You can do the audio recording. You can do the photos, but you can't do the handwritten notes. Okay. Uh, you could type that out, but I have horrible handwriting, but at least I can I can write one-handed a lot better than I... Like, you're walking around and typing it just seems to me too burned, but you could do it in Evernote. You could do it in Evernote. Um, could you, do you email the... Your audio to your client say this is what we talked about when we left through. Yeah, you could. It's not really super professional. They know that you've recorded by just saying, "Hey, can we record this conversation?" That's probably set that like, no realtor they've ever dealt with has ever done that, ever done that. And so this is the advantage of things like how we use pitch and other other things. The separation is enormous right now because I'll sit in this room and I'll tell you all what we do and three of you are going to do it. And that separation still exists for me. Like, there's not a concern. I think a lot of people aren't going to do it. I think you have to do it, but I think a lot of people aren't going to do it. Yeah. But yeah, you could share that information with them. You can go back and say, remember when we talked about this or that? Those records, are that's their voice. So um, we do it too with our buyer consultation. To find out really what's important to them, we really record that. So, I mean, we also take notes, but it just proves that you are listening to everything that they have to say. Now, do you go back and review it? You, you may or may not. Are those uh, audio files editable? No. Well, I mean, you just could put them in an MP3 player and, and, and cut them down, yeah. Okay. They're, 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 they're filmed in quick time. Uh, in, uh, no, uh, what's the Apple version of MP4. Uh, uh, audio? Oh, MP4. Yeah, whatever. And anyway, yeah, you could do it. You, when you walk through with your Evernote, you're taking still pictures. Yeah. Can you do it with video as well? You could, yeah. Is there a video to text option? Or? Or, sorry, voice text. Yeah, we'll get into Dragon Dictation. Okay. The problem is you've got to leave that, but Dragon Dictation could do that too as well, yeah. and we'll get into that later on. That will be one of our... There's a lot more apps that on that we're going to get through if we can get through these quick enough, um, but I definitely didn't want to put too much on, but we're making good time. We're only 35 minutes in, so... Um, next application is Keynote. Uh, Keynote is your PowerPoint presentation. Um, it's how we do our listing presentations. So this is, this is Keynote. And if anyone's been to my Facebook presentation, you'll know that's basically what, what we've done. Um, so, uh, it disappeared. It, it'll, it'll come back. Okay. It'll come back. There we go. Um, go there we go. So, this is what happens when we're doing our listing presentation. That iPad is like that in front of my clients on the other side of the table. I'm on this side of the table controlling the presentation with my iPhone using an application called Keynote Remote. And so from my screen, I can I can see the, the slide that it's on and the next slide that we're going to, um, and I can control that conversation. So we all talk about scripts in real estate. I really believe that your listing presentation, we all know this, is a script more for us to stay on topic and to move through and answer the questions than it is for our client. But this gets to sit right in front of their client. We get to go through with it. And the beauty of it doing on the iPad is if you're talking about your virtual 360s or some of your marketing, you bounce out of your keynote presentation and you show them. Like to say, we do these great videos, you know, in a keynote slide, go show them your great videos. Go show them your website. Go show them some of the cool things you're doing because you have internet access. Now, if the group gets bigger than a couple people, we have a laser projector about the size of this iPhone that hooks right up to the iPad and will project up to a 60 inch screen on the wall. It's 99 bucks, it's this big. So if we're sitting around and it's a, an investment group or something or a small little thing, we just put that on the table, put the other iPhone underneath and it shoots up and it's a really great nifty thing to do. Which projector do you use? Uh, it's called, uh, it starts with a P. Pixie or something, or Pico. Pico? Yeah, Pico. It's great. I mean, you can get a bunch of them, but to have that hooked up to do the presentation in Keynote, Keynote is so easy. You can import your PowerPoint presentations. Sometimes the font isn't perfect and you can go clean them up, but to do a PowerPoint presentation or a Keynote presentation and edit it and get it ready it takes no effort whatsoever. Um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a great way you can email them off. You can turn them into PDFs if you want to turn that into a, you know, a pre-listing package or a post-listing presentation package, whatever you want. That can go off too as well. You have to be connected to wireless to run the, the remote. With the Bluetooth. From, okay. Just Bluetooth. Oh, right. yeah, they, yeah, I use the, like an Apple app. But yeah. You have to be connected to a wireless to do the... Yeah, no, just Bluetooth between your, iPod, uh, your iPad and your iPhone and it just controls it. And it's nice because you can see the slide you're talking about and the next slide. So as you're getting onto the no next topic, you're running through it and uh, you can control the presentation that way. So you never have to see your iPad and they know what you're talking about and it's pretty cool. Um, so that's um, Keynote. 
Um, next application is uh, Cloud On. Cloud On and Smart Office. These two have I think Cloud On is still free. I'll find out now that all this stuff is $9.99. Smart Office, I believe, is 10 bucks. although one of the other applications, Zite, which is next, I'll show you how to find a bunch of awesome free apps all the time. But Smart Office, every month and a half, will show up free for 24 hours. Um, but what Cloud On and Smart Office are, are for PC users out there that still want to have their PC and want to have their iPad. Um, there is rumblings that um, Microsoft is going to bring out Office for iPad sometime this year. But right now, Cloud On and Smart Office allow you to uh, look at your Excel documents, um, edit them, Word documents, PowerPoint documents, all your Microsoft documents can be edited in here and then sent back on your computer and then and then worked on. So if you are still using Microsoft Documents, which is fine, uh, uh, those two applications, very, very easy to use, very simple, but it just lets you access those other documents without them turning into... See, the thing is, Apple will gladly accept Word documents and PowerPoint documents, but it doesn't go the other way. So if you bring something into Pages and work on it and then send it back to Word, it's not going to work. So the fact that you can get them on your iPad and keep them in the Word document has, a, has an advantage. So it comes back like it's Word and Word. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it ne actually never changes format. It's, it's, they've made it so that it's edited in that, that code. All goobly goop. Yeah, yeah, that's Smart Office and, and, and uh, Cloud On are good for that. Okay. Yeah. So Zite is the next application um, that I find a hunt to, to tons of value. Zite is a part of my coffee routine in the morning. They've changed the icon. It's now this very hootsuite looking owl. Um, but what Zite is, is it's an online magazine um, that I use to curate uh, my, some of the information that I want to know and, uh, and, and content. But it's your stories. So here on the side are all the topics that I want to follow. So iPad or Facebook or technology or social media or real estate or business or entrepreneurship. <coughs> so let's go into iPad and it's going to pull stories that it thinks that I'm that, that I'm interested in. And if I want to find out a really cool new iPad app that's coming out, it takes three minutes a day. I read through it, look through it just like that, look at these documents, what I want to do. And then, and then I can find out when Smart Office is free. Or there's this new video editing app that's coming called Touch Edit. It's not being approved by Apple yet, but from the reviews that I've seen here, it's going to be awesome, and it'll probably be initially offered free for the first couple of days. So little things like that will keep you on top of. But when you're done reading the article, if you press up, it'll give it a thumbs up. Or if you press down, it'll give it a thumbs down. Now, this is just for you. When you read an article and you give it a thumbs up, Zite will continue to go out there and figure out this is the stuff they want to read and this is the stuff you don't want to read. Three months ago, I liked about 50% of the articles on Zite. Now it's like 85% of the content is relevant to me. So it starts to learn who you are and goes out and gets that information and keeps it really relevant. So as you go through and you see value in a certain, app, uh, certain article, it, it, it does that. If you go into real estate now, it's, it, you can't choose Canadian real estate, but some of the articles are, are, are pretty interesting. Um, go through, but that's a great way of curating some neat content, seeing what other agents are doing and staying on your topic. So no matter what you're interested in, you can just quickly put in the topic and it will and it will find that information based on that stuff. So it's a great place to curate content. How do you prefer that over Flipboard? Uh, Flipboard's next. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, it's a, it's, 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 it's a little bit different. Yeah. Um, Flipboard, I use Flipboard a lot more to get through my Twitter feed and my Facebook feed as far as getting other stuff done. So this is Flipboard. Um, it's pretty popular. I used it a lot until I came into Zite. I like Zite because it gets to know who you are and, and it gets pretty specific. But I'll go through my Twitter feed on, on Zite. So this is, this is my Twitter feed on Zite. And you can go through Twitter on your Twitter feed, but when you're sitting down and you're having a cup of coffee in the morning, it's pretty interesting because if we can get to a video, so this is my Twitter feed. Let's find out if there's anything. There's usually a lot of stuff from Ray. <laughs> um, that Facebook announcement yesterday was horrible. Uh, anyway, uh, if you go through this stuff, you can see this stuff right inside the pro app application. So you're not leaving the application to go read the story. You're actually reading that story right in here. Here's a video. I'll give you an example. So instead of going and, 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 and Hootsuite sending you somewhere else, you get to watch that video right inside the application. Um, 
So, so I really like this ability. There's some stuff in there. Uh, uh, so it really gets through Twitter feed. I can go back through my Facebook feed. But if other people are using it, it's much like Zite. You can tell what you're interested in. You can sort of go and get your RSS feeds and, and jam them in there. And um, it's a pretty useful tool as far as getting through your content. Uh, pages. Pages is Word. Um, it's really amazing on the iPad. It's amazing on the on the Mac, but it's it's amazing on the iPad. Um, and one of the reasons why it's so great is because you're not dealing with a keyboard. It's really intuitive. So whatever you think you should be able to do, um, on so if I want to take that that image and I want to move it down here, the, the I don't know that see-through text. I don't know why that's that way. Um, <coughs> find a smaller app, uh, smaller photo. So if I take that thing, it, see how the text automatically, no matter what I do, it's going to mm -hmm. make it look good. And then you can take it and you want to rotate that, the text jumps in. So you can put in a little template for your flyers, for your whatever you want to email off. And it's really, it's as easy as what it appears to be as far as the way it outlines it. And when you get underneath another photo, it will tell you if you're square on it and if balanced and all that sort of stuff. So I don't know what it originally looked like, something like that. Um, it's but to make to make that image to type in there to make that image bigger or change the size of it, whatever I want to do, it's pretty amazing. So Pages is one of those real great ways where you can get a document out and get it sent off. Um, if you're doing any reports for foreclosures and you need photos and stuff sent off, and then you can export that out. You know, as a PDF or however we want to share it, you can open it somewhere else. It's uh, it's a great application. Um, wow, we're flying along. Google Earth. Google Earth <laughs> is an amazing real estate um, application, and we find uh, a ton of value in it all the time. And and one of the one of the things that's so great about about that is is it's in your hand all the time. And you're showing a property. I think it's going to zoom into Fort Langley because um, that's the last place I looked. So I'm out showing a house in Fort Langley, and you want to know where the parks are or proximity to schools or so on and so forth. To stand in the driveway and have this information because your cell phone's in your pocket, to be able to tell your client, you know, this is the high school and this is the elementary school, and here's the, your, your knowledge is amazing. But one of the other great tools about that, and you can zoom right in on the address, there's our amazing office right there. There's our office. Uh, one of the great things about the iPad that I use all the time is the ability to take and capture your screen. If you press the home button and the top button at the exact same time, it takes a photo of that screen. So now that photo is are now in my photo library, and we'll show you how that sort of how I utilize that later on in, in a couple more applications. But just remember, that's the photo I just took of, of Google Earth right now, and you can zoom right in on a, another, let's go right into a, a piece of property here. And for example, we'll use this as an example, we can just rotate that up. Right, so let's take, we'll use this as an example. So there's a, that's the house we're dealing with, and we'll take a photo of that, and that's done. So the next application, obviously, is Google Maps. Google Maps is in a bit of a quandary right now. They've released their iPhone app. Uh, in the uh, iOS 6 update, uh, Apple and Google are at each other's throats. They got rid of, um, <coughs> this is horrible. This is good on your iPhone. The quality of the photos aren't great. Once again, this is Google Maps that I've created an application from their mobile website. Uh, Google Maps for iPad should be released shortly. So I'll show you what it's like on Google Maps on their, on their website. So once again, it's just going to their website. I've created a, a short key for it. But let's go in and... The, I popped this in last night so that I wouldn't have to take it up too much. Uh, what's the address here? It's not coming up. 34314. 314? 34314 Marshall Road. I'm dyslexic. What? 34. Yeah. 314. Yeah. Marshall. Marshall Road. There you go. So, um, so there you are. But the, the, the real, ma the way we I use this when I need to in a crunch time is the little, the street view icon. So touch the little man down there. And uh, we'll be right here at McGavin's Bread. So that's we're right here right now. There's Bob sitting in the corner. 
Um, so if I need a photo for a for a, for a CMA and I, I, there's no photos ever been listed before and I don't have time to go and get a photo of that property, there you go. Boom, I've got a photo, I take that in, I put that in there. Now this is Google and you're not supposed to take the photo of that. But that's, uh, um, so there you go. So you can crop that down. <laughs> that's okay, I didn't record. Record. That was a recording, right? Uh, <laughs> My name is uh, so so that's a neat little thing to do that and also you know to go back and take a look and now what I really do like now is Google has been now adding the date of the image so when you're listing something and you're trying to figure out what the odds are that that balcony is still that or whatever or the tree still there we know that this was an August 2001 photo um, and that constantly gets updated but that screenshot is one of um, one of the real cool ways that brings us to our next application which is Skitch. Skitch is owned by Evernote. Uh, they bought them out uh, about a year and a half ago. But Skitch is an amazingly powerful tool in order to communicate what you're trying to say in, 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 in a visual term. So let me show you how, you, Skitch is for your iPhone now, but I, I really do like it more for uh, the iPad. So let's take that photo that we took there in Fort Langley. And this is a property I'm, I'm, I'm curious about. Right, so here we go, and I want to tell my clients or the other realtor, you, you're selling something in Brookswood or, or, or you know, it's on septic field. Um, I want to I want to illustrate roughly where the septic field is. So I'm going to choose, you know, there's the septic field there, right? And uh, I want to say that, uh, you know, this is, I want to point out, uh, let's point out the well. So that's where the well is. So that's ability to take some, an application and and then and then have that done, uh, and that's going to take it off to, to off to uh, Evernote, and then I'm just going to simply share that with the realtor, email that out, put it in the camera roll. But it's a way of taking a photo and really really doing it up. I can also discard that. So I'm talking about my clients. My client said, Michael, I really like that house we saw in Fort Langley, but can you tell me where the high school is in comparison to to the house? So I can just simply go, all right, there's the house. And there's the high school, and there's the elementary school, and I can tag all that out there and get that information out. So, so Skitch is an amazingly great application for, for doing stuff. Likewise, if you get a proof on a, a business card and you want to say, you know, can you make this bigger? You just pull that in there. Can you make this bigger? It's a nice way of editing stuff on the road, and it goes in. Saves it as a, a as a photo, which obviously you can convert to a PDF and so on and so forth. So Skitch, I use it a ton. At first I thought, ah. We won't use it, but it's amazing when you're going through, uh, you're doing a deficiency list or you're doing uh, uh, an inspection, and someone says, I, I look at, I don't know where you're talking about this crack in the foundation. So I mean, take a photo and have an arrow drive right to it. Uh, really drives the point home. So it's uh, it's a it's a tool we use all the time. Uh, it's pretty cool. Um, Hootsuite for all you Twitterers out there. Uh, Anyone, anyone listen to to the to the ramblings of uh, Gary Vaynerchuk? Gary Vaynerchuk, good. He rambles all the time, but he says the most powerful website in the world is search.twitter.com, and your ability to engage clients and customers through search.twitter.com. So your ability to go out and search for keywords. Well, if search.twitter.com is the most powerful website in the world, in his opinion, then Hootsuite must be the most powerful tool in the world. Because you're able to set up searches. Now, if anyone's on Twitter and sort of goes, I don't understand it. I was in an amazing presentation the other day from Kat Stern. She's amazing. I asked her maybe she can come in and talk to you guys. It's great. But I, there's so much value in Twitter. So much value in Twitter. But the value isn't in necessarily the people that you follow or follow you. It's those conversations where they're talking about your brand. If I was selling Toyota cars and I heard someone tweet saying, thinking about buying a Toyota, and I knew that that tweet was 13 kilometers away from where my dealership was, I might say something over Twitter, hey, well, that's a great idea, they're great cars, or something like that. So <laughs> you can see here that if anyone talks about Walnut Grove within 2.6 kilometers, I hear it, right? Or whatever it is. So if someone says the word North Langley, or Langley, or Realtor, or thinking of moving, or any of those keywords, so these are people that are not necessarily following, but these are searches of information. So when it comes up, like when Tyler does his Tyler real estate thing, if it says Langley, it always shows up in my Langley feed, 
right? So, you know, it's always there, and I can hear people talking about Langley. This is going back a little bit. This morning I haven't gone through. But see, these are all stuff that are talking about Langley, um, or thinking about moving, or realtor, or for sale. Whatever searches you want to search, if you do a little niche, little um, neighborhood, you don't know that those people are on Twitter, but once they start talking about something you're interested in, Hootsuite is a super powerful tool. I know there's a lot of people out there that love TweetDeck. I think you sign up for Twitter, you never go back to Twitter.com in your lifetime, you get on um, on Hootsuite. And then I say about Hootsuite, you can have multiple accounts. So here's our real estate account, and here's our community account. And we're going to be adding, uh, looks like our, our thing in Vegas is going to turn into a weekly web show. We'll have to get a new Twitter feed for that, and I can add that in there instead of going from application to application. Um, so Hootsuite's amazing. If you're on Twitter, you need to be on Hootsuite. Any questions about Hootsuite? So those keyword searches you're talking about were set up in Hootsuite? Yeah, set up in Hootsuite. Now, to geotag, you have to be on your computer, because I think it's an IP address thing. Oh. Once it sets up, it migrates to your iPad. Um, but search terms, you can, you can if you want to know about, like, if you want model trains from 1965, if that's what you're interested in, you can find antique model trains. And every single time someone says antique model train, you, you hear that conversation. But the, prex the, the proximity of the conversation for what we do is so important. Someone tweeting about real estate in, in Labrador has no value. Someone down the street has tons of value. If it's a fellow realtor, it has value because you want to know what they're doing and marketing wise. And if it's a client, it has tons of value, just knowing about your topic. So being able to search people that you don't know to follow yet, and then obviously you follow them. In your Twitter feed, you have your, your, your website. You say something of value, they're going to find out who you are, build a relationship. Don't go in there and try to close them right away, but go and start to build the context, and it's amazing. So when you're setting up your search words, do you have to do like six search words to capture, or you just like, like you've got... On yeah, I think you can do... On the, here, well let's, well, let's, well, let's add a new feed. So I can add a... Let's edit, add a new feed. Now, I can't do proximity searches. So I can say... Uh, mention the set tweets, retweets. Keyword. So keyword. So I think your maximum three <coughs> per column. You can add more and more columns. So in this column, I might... Like if... like. If you're interested in, you know, Langley Minor Hockey or whatever it is, you could say, you know, Langley Minor Hockey or whatever it was. So when those come up, you would find those conversations or whatever you're interested in, or your neighborhoods or Willoughby or Walnut Grove. You have to do Langley Minor Hockey, LMH. Yeah, all those different ones. Yeah, depending on what depending on what people are talking about. And then once you get the sense of what people are talking about, your keywords might change over time because you realize a lot of them are talking in a different manner. Um, but having the ability to search what people are talking about and then join those conversations because you have expertise in those. And don't join those conversations and bully people like, oh, I know. Just add value to it and it's amazing how quickly they follow you back and then you're having a conversation and then you're having a cup of coffee and then your real estate signs in their front lawn. So um, that's really a ton of value. Hootsuite's an amazingly powerful tool and it's awesome on the iPad and they're a great Vancouver company. and. Uh, um, they're amazing. Beautiful. Any questions? We'll take uh, any questions on that. We'll take a five-minute break. Thank you. Uh, next, next app that's uh, increasingly getting better and better, and it's a, I think it's a really integral part of what we do is you know your social media ability to curate content, create content, and all the content. If you ever seen our white screen videos that we do or something like that, that's all done on the iPhone and the iPad. I mean, we don't all of our photos, all of our videos done here, but um, Facebook continues to get better and better. But pages there is to manage your business uh, your business page so uh, it still has some some limitations I guess I should just start rating these things so it stops asking me um, so you have the ability to manage your um, your business page there are limitations you still can't upload um, a video uh, through uh, through the um, pages application and um, you can't see your news feed which has a ton of value too as well um, so that's so that's the limitation. Um, you also can't tag uh, people that you want to mention and their business and whatnot. But and Safari, uh, when you go to your um, your Facebook business page on Safari, you still have the ability to. Let's go. You still have the ability through this application to do almost everything you want. You can post. You can do stuff, um, and you can tag. You can't upload the photo because that photo is going to the old 
hard drive on your computer looking for stuff, but you can cut and paste links and do all that sort of stuff through Safari, and then through the Pages application you can do most other stuff. Um, Facebook will continue to get more mobile, um, super powerful tool, um, lots of business starting to come uh, in the recent months here through Facebook and it's something that we should all have, uh, a, a Facebook business page, so the page manager is great for that. Um, next application that is, is, is an iPhone application but obviously works on your iPad is uh, Canadian Mortgage. I don't know if this will change yet. Well, um, this is a really... Um, Um, wow. Uh, so, so you can really go through everything here. So if you go down to the, your loan section here, um, you can. I've got a 299 fixed rate on a 25-year amortization fee, um, and then land transfer. Here's the great thing about it: they finally fixed this since the last time we talked. It used to always revert automatically back to Ontario, but now it keeps on on BC. So it has your your uh, property, your um, PPT. As far as first time tax on or off. Uh, you can do that so it's a first time buyer. Obviously I've got a purchase price in here of 2i, so let's go ahead and change that purchase price. We'll get it under 425. Let's go 375. That goes. So now if we go into our land transfer tax, mm -hmm. see it says non-lucky you. Uh, <laughs> I do it that way, it's $5,500. So it goes through there and obviously it's not replacing going to a mortgage broker and getting a real pre-approval, but when you're sitting down it puts in your utility cost, it approximates the tax, you can change that. Um, you know, your deposit 5% down is 1875, and it really is a great application that's designed for can, for Canadians to sort of really quickly, when you're having that initial consultation, that question comes up, to just pull out your iPad and do that. Now, it doesn't have the ability to export this out, but you can definitely take a screenshot of it. Uh, email that off, turn it into a PDF, and send it off to your client if they sort of want to have a snapshot of value. Is there a line in for strategies? Uh, th there's not, but I think you can add, it's a really good question. I don't know if they enter utilities, you could, yeah, I guess you could just up it by the 225. Um, and it, oh, so, okay. so let's add that to, you know, you could go 825 will be the total close. So you could do it that way and that manipulates yeah. it. So this is this is the, the, the home value of it, but your mortgage product portion of it is the 1684. Gives you the total amount of what your costs are a month. It's a great conversation. Obviously, from there, they got to get it out to a mortgage broker, but it's a really great application. There's some great mortgage calculators out there, but the fact that it puts in the property transfer tax and first home home, home buyer and all that sort of stuff, it's really uh, it's really awesome to, to, it's to use. It's called Canadian Mortgage? It's called Canadian Mortgage. There's the icon, all the icons that I've got you guys, just so you can see it, but it's, it's great. Um, Genius Scan. I use Genius Scan a lot. There's also Turbo Scan. Um, Genius Scan has some uh, a really great value. So if I uh, a couple things happen. So let's say um, uh, let's fold something like this in. Here. So the only time our team really has paper is when we get ourselves a deposit check. That's the only time that we really sort of deal with paper. Um, so. Um, the thing about G Genius Scan, you can go in there, and there's a lot of them. Turbo Scan, they all do the exact same thing. I, I use Genius Scan at the beginning, I tend to like it. But um, all, all you have to do is uh, focus on what you want to scan, take a snapshot of it, put the quarters in there. So you can see, oh, actually, I didn't get it all done there, I'll retake. I'm sorry about that. So focus in, take the photo, uh, and then. Um, just put the corners where you need to have them. Oh, I'm sitting in front of you guys, sorry. Put those those corners where you need to be. And now here's what the really cool thing about it is. That's clearly on an angle. It's it's not proper, but I just I want to use that. And it flattens it right up. I can go no enhancement, and there's the, the deposit check. It cuts it out, and it's done. From there, I can export that out as a PDF or a JPEG into uh, VBC off to the other agent direct deposit that check and I'm done. Once again, I'm paperless again. I, the moment I get paper in my hand, I freak out, I put it online and I get rid of it. So that's a really nice thing. The other thing it's really great for is the super annoying issue when realtors send you contracts in JPEG form, uh, yeah. right? It's so, so annoying. So all you do is you go in here to choose your photo. You go down to my iPad for realtors. So here is a JPEG, that is a photo. Pull that up there, it automatically sizes it for me. I've got that, this is an amendment to the listing contract. I say go ahead and use that. I say no enhancements or black and white when I want, and then email that back to the agent, 
and it's done. So that's great. The other thing you can do in PDF Expert Tool as well is when you ever have a piece of paper up and then sideways and up then upside down in PDF Expert you can just quickly put them all the right way but this is it's so annoying I the old practice was go to the office for us go to the office print it out scan it back in when it was a JPEG which was annoying so um, docu um, genius scan and turbo scan will all pull in JPEGs convert it to PDFs and then you're back in business and you can do multiple too as well so I can save that and add more pages to it so they're not one off so I can have a document um, so anytime you want to scan something real quick and prove that you've got something signed in, if you do get a piece of paper and you want to just get it off to the agency to remove subjects, it's crude, but it will send that off to the agency to done remove subjects and you can go back to the office and scan it in when you have to. Sorry, you said JPEG to PDF yeah. scan? Yeah. And then you, you can send it out in, as a PDF. In, into expert? Yeah, or whatever you want to do, nuance or whatever it is. Get it Back in expert for signatures? Yep, then so so all you want to do is um, go to the documents. Uh, let's do that again. So let's go in here, open it up in, there's the photo. I'm going to use that. I'm going to no enhancement. I'm going to click the arrow key on the back of it. I'm going to open in other applications. Any actual size, PDF expert. There you go. Signature. Done. So that's when so you get you that in. Yeah, you can't do this changes in the scan. You have to get into expert. Yeah, all the scan is really doing is getting it from that JPEG form into yeah. a PDF form. Because you can't send PDFs, or you can't send JPEGs into Nuance and all that sort of stuff. And I'm really bullish on Nuance, but um, you can't do that. So it's that it happens all the time with less techie clients, for sure, when they send you the JPEG. And it's just easier to go, Instead of saying, hey, can you go back and rescan that in and send it to me, then just to pop it into uh, Genius Scan and, and, and change it. Uh, what do we got next? Oh, Fusion. So the, the, the big changes that have happened in our industry in the last for, for being paperless is web forms and whatnot. Fusion is up for the iPad. It's called Fusion Experience. It's this icon right here. And it's the full desktop version. And what it does is it streams it through an application that converts the flash of it or I don't know how, it lags a little bit. You're going to have to cover the screen again there, I think. Thank you. Um, <coughs> I think we're good. Um, so there we go, this is, this, is, this is Fusion, and it's the exact same application you have on, on your desktop, and it's running through the iPad. So, we can do uh, we can do a search for available properties in the Fraser Valley Real Estate Board. In Langley, in Fort Langley. There we go. We got 22 matches. Go ahead and look at the details. Sorry, Bob. I'm still in front of you. Uh, so <laughs> there's a property I want to take a look at. Photos, everything, and it's the full thing on the iPad. It's everything you do. You can send off the touch base. You can pull up. Um, you know, if you're, if once again, you're you're there and you're and you're trying to find a way to do an offer, and you need to find. Well, that one. I don't know why that one doesn't have tax details. Really? I think you could have them that didn't have tax details. Um, but so it's that's full there. CMA obviously it runs a little slower, a little clunky. But when you're out on the road in your coffee shop and someone sends you an MLS number and you want to touch base. And, and get that done. But there you go. It's all there. You can pop it into web forms there. I don't know if that app actually works yet, um, but you can touch base that out and, and get it off. So Fusion, on the road, have full MLS access now. Uh, it works on your iPhone, although it's really small. But um, it's a uh, it's a great um, application to uh, to use, obviously. Can you export those sheets onto another? Yeah, you can email it out. You can PDF it out. You can get into iBooks from there. It can go from everywhere you want it to do. So it's into to to Evernote wherever you want it to go. The other last little thing before we get into some of the fun applications that aren't on the list is uh, Chuck Magnus in our office, who's a really awesome guy. Uh, I was running late, and I said, oh, I haven't updated my uh, my lockbox key yet. And if you put that address that's in there under Century Lock into your iPhone, you can update your Century Lock card through your iPhone at any lockbox. 
So, you know, so if you're ever running late, you can just jam it in there. You just press it. It gives you your update code. You don't have to call in. You update your card. And so now once every 10 times, you've got to update your card. But for a week and a half, you, you don't have to go back to the office and, and update your card. So it's just a sentry lock. You put in your key. It gives you your update code. It's kind of it's kind of. Nice. Sorry, is that an app? A sentry lock app? Well, no. It's once again, it's going to the mobile website, and you're creating a, a, a an application on your. Uh, here, I'll show you a shortcut. That. Is that, it's just a shortcut. Oh, a shortcut. Yeah, you just make a shortcut in, there, and you're on your iPhone. You're standing at a uh, lockbox key. You're not updated. It's saving you from going back to the office once again. One of your ten call-ins. One of your ten call-ins, yeah. So you're on, whatever it is. yeah. So you just once a week when you're at home that night, yeah. Remember, but if you ever someone calls you, you go, oh, I haven't updated it. You're not running around, just doing it from your iPhone. So it's uh, it keeps you mobile, right? Like, for me, it's making um, making monies on the road. Um, one of the things that we're going to see now, we're going to get to some fun stuff, and no matter how much time we have, we'll see some some of the cutting sort of great things that, that, that we can now use it to do, sort of wow stuff. But one of the things I showed last time in this presentation was augmented reality. Um, and I'm trying to see, last time for whatever reason, <laughs> the Remax uh, augmented reality app didn't work. Um, do I even have it on here? Did I take it off? Um, you should organize that, Justin. I should. I I I, I ditched Remax. Oh, there he is. <laughs> uh, so this is this is the uh, cool augmented reality application. We still have our clients some of this sometimes. You know when. Uh, uh, now it didn't work last time on, and it's not working again. I don't know if it's just the you area we're in. Slow down, there? let it focus. On, uh, I, I don't know. think so. Just, um, and if you point to the to the window. Uh, anyway. <laughs> the signs show up in there, it pulls up the Remax stuff. The Remax signage looks different. It always works on my um, It's a really cool application. We're going to see more and more augmented reality going forward. But the fact that Remax has, um, <coughs> there is, this is how you have to calibrate it. Um, five, oh, radius 500 meters. That maybe has something to do with it. Anyway, it's awesome. Um, but 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 here's where we're going. This is give you an idea of probably where we're going next. We're going to see new construction change in the way they interact. This is a piece of paper. Um, it's an application that NASA released uh, when Curiosity was landing on Mars that my kids just couldn't get enough of, and to be quite honest, neither could I. Um, so this is a piece of paper, a flat piece of paper. This is what will be in show. Homes uh, that shows the whole unit and the floor plans instead of those things on the wall. There'll be little floor plans of drawings like this. And what happens when you take a device and you point it at that drawing is unbelievable. Um, and you'll be able to have this three dimensional look from, yeah, I mean, there's some really cool applications. You can see how it's kind of like a QR code. Yeah, like but that. it's really, I mean, to be able to go around and see it uh, and you can make things happen with it. You can make the arm come out and move around and you can get right in and see it. But this is where we're going to go with, I mean, you can imagine a floor plan on the wall where it's down on the floor and you pop up and the couches come up and the fridge comes up and you can actually get in and oh, take a look cool. at that. I mean, it's 360, as long as it's in there. All right, I was calculating it. Um, it's a pretty cool way and this is where we're going with some of this technology. And I think there's huge opportunities in real estate where you want to physically be in these places and get an idea of size and dimension. Uh, there's a there's an application called Layer, and if you ever see an ad in the newspaper or a magazine that has the Layer icon on the back of it, you point your smartphone at it, and something's going to happen. The car's going to explode, or something's going to happen. It's pretty cool. They're a Dutch company, and um, they're doing some really cool stuff with marketing, and uh, and and that's where uh, that's where some of this is going. And I wanted to just quickly take you back um, to uh, to tourist. Tourist, you can upload your own your own tours, and that that tour that I showed you of of, uh, of uh, Fort Langley was shot on my cell phone. Um, but you can also get obviously get them done pretty professional. But this is the next wave in where we're going to go with these virtual tours. Tourist is a company uh, out of Silicon Valley. I'm trying to find one that's really really cool. Um, but the next thing that Tourist is going to do is when you move forward with your iPad or your iPhone, it's going to zoom. Um, and you're going to be able to walk around a lobby or a living room 
And so if I was sitting there and there was a fireplace there, if I walked forward, I would move with my iPad. Like, and your, your ability to see a room in this sort of 360 um, that doesn't have a whole lot of technical to get done. Uh, like I said, I filmed that one crudely with my iPhone in about a minute and a half. But the ability now to walk around, and you can, uh, right now, you can upload your tours to Tourist, and you can have multiple. So you can have one address and have multiple tours on that same thing. Um, no one else is using this application right now. It's much like the Remax YouTube channel, which just blows my mind that people don't don't put their stuff on it. Um, this is where the future. This is not. I don't understand the size and the like. This is this is amazing. And you'll be able to go there, and that door is going to say. Um, that door is going to say bedroom, and you're going to click on it, and you're going to be taken into that room, and you will look around, and this is where we're going. And once again, cost, this cost will come down to a point where having something like this will be the same cost as a 360 tour right now. To do a 360 photo like this of Globe is four photos. Right now, the guy taking your 360 photos is taking like 10 to do a pan. These are four photos, so the amount of work to be done isn't that much. Once again, I shot that one in Fort Langley on my iPhone, which is free and uploaded. Tourist is a pretty cool application that we're going to see a lot more stuff go to. And it might not be Tourist, but it'll be stuff like that. Uh, next application I want to show you is something called Mad... I'm going to step over here, Bob, for you. Everyone, I'll do it over here for a second. Um, this next application is called Magic Plan. And Magic Plan is a really cool way to do a floor plan um, of, of your property. So this is, if you haven't been, this is our um, Fort Langley office. That's the dimensions of it. Front door, we have a little balcony. This is the open space. There's a little conference room in the back. We even have the closets in there. This is our computer area, our bathroom. This is where our photocopier is. That's the, this is exactly the way it looks like. And it calculates square footage. Now, we don't use the square footage, obviously, because I can't, uh, you know, I don't want to use that. I obviously go through and measure it. But it's a really great way to, to do a quick floor plan of your property. So let, I'll show you how this works. It uses your iPhone, so let's let's call this next room. We're going to add a meeting room, and now I can't really see the corners in here too much. But basically, what you're going to do is you're going to take your iPad, and you're just going to point them to wherever there's a corner. It's going to drop a little cone. That's a door. I'm going to drop a door there. And that door goes over there, and then the wall goes. Let's just say that that's the wall down there. There's a wall, and there's a door. And that there's is a door. crazy. It's going to actually going to be a horrible looking room. But let's uh, let's try to make it square, and then that's the wall over there. And there's the other corner. And let's see if we can go all the way back to oh, door. Oh, I do. That's a door. Drop. <laughs> <laughs> So you just drop it in right there. And then there's our room with the doors in there, where I was standing in relation to the room, right? That's exactly that's where I was standing. Uh, so then I can I can say, yeah, that's the that's the application I want. And then I can make that go around anywhere I want. I can turn that to make it match up. And when they match up, they match up to a point where it is bang on. So if you quickly want to do a floor plan of someone, you know, the house was built in 1978. Uh, now, some of these really cool room houses that have all these little curved walls can't do that. But to do a quick little uh, apartment layout, to add that into your marketing, to put that out there, once again, there's value in it for the sale of the home, but impressing your client, there's enormous value in it. Um, so that's one of the little ways you can do it. To download that now as a PDF or a JPEG, I think you pay a buck ninety-nine for floor plan or something like that. It could be as many stories as you want. Um, it really walks you through it. And you can change the doors too as well, obviously. Uh, you can add furniture um, and everything you want. But if that door here, was a bifold door instead of it. It's a bifold door now. If it was a double hinge door, it's a double hinge door, and you can go through and add windows and furniture and toilets and closets and all that sort of stuff. So the first time you shoot a room, it'll take you a few minutes, and then eventually you can do rooms in like 30 seconds, and it goes through. Once again, I wouldn't rely on the square footage and the measurements. You can calibrate your iPad, but it's just as far as in a visual layout for marketing, it has um, it has value. Have you ever compared the measurements? That they're came pretty up with close. The real? Yeah. yeah, they're pretty close. They're within inches, but you can also go back into it. You if can you change them if you verify your measurements. Yeah. you know manually, you can go back. Yeah, you can go back, yeah, you can go back right here and change, change it, right? Change you can go ahead and change it. To make it it's a lot of work. I, we use it for more of a visual in marketing than actual calculation of square footage. What's the name of that one again? Magic Plan.
Who is that? Who is that? Name of it. Oh yeah, magic plant. <coughs> one word or two. Uh, I'll show you the icon on there. Um, M A G I C P L A N. Yeah, it's one word. Yeah, right here. This little icon right here. Yeah. Uh, where do we go next? Uh, dragon dictation. The question earlier on was 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 audio. Dragon dictation for a guy who's super dyslexic, who hates to write, who wants to put stuff down on paper and then edit it later on. Dragon dictation is a ridiculous application. Um, so if you are talking about, if you're a better speaker than you are a writer when you think quick, to just tap dragon dictation and say, I love working for Remax. Dragon dictation and say I love working for Remax. It's done that you can add periods and commas by saying it, but it's really, really accurate. You might have to go back and clean up the odd word. And then from there, you, I could send that out as a text message if I wanted to. I could I could pull that out and tell what to do. But it's a really great, accurate application for getting thought down real quick or to composing stuff if you're going to give a presentation to get the body of something to go back and clean it up. That's the way my mind works. I work very much. Uh, orally first and then written second opposed the other way around. So Dragon Dictation is a really cool application to sort of get thoughts down real quick and from there you can copy and paste that, put it in a, a, a pages or move it around or whatever you want to do. Compared uh, to Siri? Yeah, said, yeah. Uh, Open <laughs> Home Pro. Here's a real estate application that's phenomenal. Open Home Pro, uh, we don't do open houses on our, on our team but we do do it for the very first weekend that a property is on the market. Uh, what we do is when we go in there and we're shooting our video and we're doing our photos, we hold an open house. We're there anyway. We've asked the client to clean it up real quick. So what we've done here is this is, an, this is the property we had down in White Rock. I quickly ran around and took five or six photos with my iPad. They're, you know, they loaded them up. It has your square footage and whatnot. We just cut and paste the write-up from, some, from our Evernote when we do the write-up of it. Cut and paste it in there. And then we're there. We're ready to go. So I can be begin my open home. Start my open home. There we go. And then basically this is sitting on the kitchen counter. And when someone comes in, we hand them the iPad, right? And we ask them to sign in. So they sign in. They touch the iPad. Oh. Name, email address. Are you working with an agent? You can add any question you want. How did you hear about our listing? You can change the questions. Any feedback for the seller? Whatever the questions you want to have. These are the standard questions we add to them. And it's in there. And the, the, the numbers at Open Home Pro they say the accuracy of information that they get compared to if we have it right down is substantially higher, like really, really high. A lot of people, we hand it to 85-year-olds. They go, oh, this is cool. And they put in their name, <laughs> their email address, and, uh, and they send it back to you. The moment they hand it back to you, it emails them a feature sheet. Thanks for visiting the open house. If you have any questions, it's done. It's sent to them, and then you can go back. You can get a list of all the people that viewed it. If you change the price and go into Open Home Pro and change the price, it'll send them, hey, by the way, you know that open house you visited on this day? We've changed the price. If you have any questions, let us know. Pass it on. Done. Done, done, done. Once again, your ability to maximize your efficiency with doing very little is amazing. So Open Home Pro, uh, we used it when we had our, um, our, our wine and cheese at our Fort Leonard office. We handed it around and people come in. There's applications for it, but the ability to send in information, and when it emails it off, it's good looking. Like it's got the photos, it's got a map, it's pretty slick, uh, and it's improved all the time. Vision, our version two came out about three or four months ago, and they're a real cool company doing some really neat stuff. So um, that's, a, that's a great application specifically for what we do. Um, any specific interest that you guys have? I mean, we do all our video, our photo editing, everything on there. I think we're kind of getting down as far as getting into some other stuff that's not super detailed. Does anyone we'll open up for questions? Is there any uh, cutting edge uh, CRM apps that you happen to be using? Or yeah, the CRM right? that we're using right now, it's amazing. Uh, and, and I'm drinking the Kool Aid, but it's the Buffini cool. um, CRM. Uh, it runs full on your iPad. There's no difference. You can use the application on your iPad, but then at the bottom you can choose to have it run full sight. It runs full sight. There's nothing different on your iPad than it does from there. It's an amazing application. It runs perfectly on, uh, on your iPad. So I, we looked at a lot of other options. Uh, the way we model our business before I ever took Buffini coming to Remax uh, was very, very similar. So it was an easy transition over. It's a great CRM. I really, really like it. Can you import Outlook? Yes. Okay. You can import 
your you can import your MailChimp. And MailChimp's got a great application, by the way, if you guys use Mail in MailChimp. I'm trying to see the, the, the applications that I really see value in MailChimp's great. Um, this pick view is gonna be really interesting. It's just starting. Can you explain MailChimp? Some people don't know. Oh, MailChimp is the uh, is, is an application like Constant Contact where you can send out your, your e-newsletters. Uh, and you can put, uh, I think it's free up to about 500 people. You can send up to 4,000 emails a month. So if your client base is, is, is of that size, it's a great application. And then in MailChimp, you'll find out the open rate, who opened it out, bounce accounts, uh, you know, where they, if you put four links in an in a, in a email, it'll say which stories got more interest. So you go, okay, Obviously, my clients are interested in reading about this, you know, home inspector, this information, whatever it is. Um, so you can sort of start tailoring that information. And that data that you get back from your clients, obviously, is super important. But you can find out those open rates, who's opening it. It scores your clients. So the clients that always open and always read your stuff get a five-star rating. And then you can find out who's consuming your content. Uh, and it's a great application. That now is integrated very well into Buffini. Buffini has a very good email out program that's inside the CRM. But MailChimp is still a really great way to uh, to contact your clients. I see a lot of people moving from Constant Contact, it seems, over to MailChimp, but they're very similar applications. I've never used Constant Contact, so I don't can't really speak to just how well it works. Um, Pick View is an interesting application. You might want to play around with it. It's a uh, uh, thing link. If you ever go to a website called Thing Link. Realtors are starting to use it to do their virtual tours, but basically you can take a photo and you can make it interactive. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's sort of what PicView is doing. You can take a picture and then you can use your finger to point out things and audio record your, 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 your talk. And that photo goes out and it plays it almost like a video with the photo. So if you're talking about uh, landscaping issues or, a, or whatever it is, you can actually in make the photos interactive. PicView is still a little ways away. It's, it's new. But ThingLink, um, there's some virtual tours on ThingLink where a guy is taking a picture of the entrance of the house and he's added, you know, click here to go to the backyard, click here to go in the front entrance, click here for that, and all of his website information. So you click to the backyard, that takes you to a link of a photo of the backyard. Do you want to go inside the back door? Do you want to go? It's really interesting. ThingLink is, is, is pretty interesting, and you can embed those photos into websites and so on and so forth. So that's ThingLink is a, a, a computer-based program, but it has, a, it has a ton of value moving forward for what we do. Um, uh, display recorder. I'm, this is the, the this is going to be my obsession this year. This is uh, screen capture your iPad. So if you have a CMA on your iPad or a presentation you want to give, you can easily record your iPad and everything that happens on your iPad. So if you're giving a tutorial or or something you want to give some information out. Uh, screen capture for your um, iPad, and there's going to be some. You've, we've all seen screen capture videos on YouTube, um, but it's kind of a neat application, and, and there's some value moving forward. If you want to do your listing presentation, and your clients were, you know, in, you know, overseas right now, and they're coming back, and you want to do your listing presentation, you can basically do your listing presentation and email it to them with all your audio in there. Um, you can record just video or video and audio. What's that one called? Disp recorder. D I S P recorder. Uh, you can find it now for $4.99 once in a while. I think it's on $9.99 right now. Uh, but it's basically, I'll show you it's, how, how it works. We've got a second. So you pull up the application, you press record. It's recording. It's going to kick me out, but I'll show you. And we go into Zite. Open up Zite. I think it's recording my audio right now. I don't know how, how I have it set up. But there we go. We're showing what we want to show. Exit out of there. Go back into Disk Recorder. Press Stop. Save that. There we go. And then let's just hook up uh, Apple TV again. I don't know why Disk Recorder is emails yet, but obviously you're not going to be doing it on Apple TV. So then, this is the, where's the 60? Right here. But I'll show you. And we go into Zite. Open up Zite. So it's recording your voice and what you're doing on your iPad. Right now, so know, if I'm you're having me in your CMA or you want to do a market show. report, you want to do a market out. report and send it out, you've got all the stats for Abbotsford when you go and you want to go to the photos and you want to talk about it, thin through it. And then thing too as well, you can always record that and then add your audio <laughs> afterwards in any application you want. But it's pretty cool. Uh, and if you've got picture in picture video, like the white screen videos we do, uh, let me show you just a white screen video that we did. 
where, where I see value of something like disparate, disparate quarter. Um, so let's just open this one. I think this one has a, a photo in it. Oh, missing content. Really? So what are you pulling up now, Michael? This is this is this is iMovie. Oh, I. So this so this is something. Once again, this is filmed and edited. The intro, everything on the iPad. Uh, there's a cool little intro application. Get different different applications. Welcome but if you did disc recorder and you had, well, we're giving just going to show up here, but you can have video show up here. You can have a tour show up here and be talking about that in disc recorder. So you could be, you know, on online and doing that sort of thing. So it's it's pretty neat that way. But this white screen video, that's is filmed with an iPhone 4, and it's it, there's no trickery to this. This is all edited on the iPad. So mm -hmm. um, doing things like this is pretty neat as far as so what we do moving forward. Um, what app do you use for the intro? The intro is done in this uh, intro designer. Actually, he's a really good guy. He's from somewhere down in uh, Central America. Um, and there's all these different um, intros. We, we've been emailing back and forth. He's going to be re re releasing a bunch of business sort of TV show intro type things. But basically, you can go in here and you can, uh, like, uh, here, they will show you this birthday. Oh, I haven't. So there's an intro for a birthday. But everywhere that there's a photo or, or, or graphics, you can manipulate it. So um, this photo would be whatever you want it to be, and then you can have it whatever you want. And then that just makes it into, you export it, put it into um, iMovie, and send it out. And you do, your, do all your stuff in there. It's pretty cool. Um, like, uh, see, like this birthday one, I have this, so we can choose that template. And there's 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 better ones to use, but um, let's see where we go here. So there, I just double click on that photo. I select from my library. Let's put the picture of McGavin's bird in there. Mm -hmm. uh, and I play that through. And then when I go back and play it, it will automatically size it and bring it in. So you could have and you can change Mary's birthday and export that out as a as a video file and throw that into iMovie. It's that's that's the best. I mean, obviously you can do better stuff on your desktop, but you're on the road and you're doing quick edits. Um, it's um, it's kind of neat. Um, Over heard people talking about Over. Over is a great way to add. Uh, it's an iPhone app um, to add uh, uh, words on top <coughs> of your photos, Instagram type style. Um, pitch is a ridiculously uh, valuable um, uh, video editing and creating um, application for your iPhone. Um, and all this stuff, a lot of the stuff I talk about is um, universal or House is a pretty cool application if you want to get really great sort of content for your uh, for your iPhone or for your um, um, sorry photos for your um, like Facebook fan page and that sort of stuff you can you can choose sort of area where you want to go so I think there is a Vancouver in here and you want to see some really cool applic photos. So these are all really great photos. So if you want to talk about what's it like to have the year price tag so you can find out how much that window cost. Um, but there's some great photo on house and some great content on there if you're looking for ideas or just looking for some great visuals to put on your uh, f uh, fan page and talk about. Was this, would this be your dream quick kitchen sort of questions to, to kickstart some engagement? I mean, that's ridiculous. That's in Vancouver somewhere. Um, but there's just some amazing <laughs> photographs of, of, of real estate. It's all real estate. Um, there are professional information you get there. You can get home stagers and some stuff. But um, the photos are, uh, are breathtaking, and they've got some really great content. So that's House. Uh, H-O-U-Z-Z. -Z. All right, so questions. Are there any questions about stuff we covered or didn't cover? <laughs> So it's basically obviously scratching the surface and just kind of it's way over too much. But I think I hope some of you leave the room going, yeah, I want to. This is sort of where I see the value of this, and I want to have it go this way. Once again, ever want to pick my brain, talk, pick up the phone, get on a Skype or a Google Hangout? You want to come to the office? Honestly, I'm not just making that offer um, just half-heartedly. Really, if you ever want to pick my brain. Call me. Uh, I will learn as much from you as you'll learn from me. So um, there you go. What's you, local mind? 
Localmind is an application um, that sort of runs off Foursquare. Okay. And so what you do is you, you end up, if you become checked in in a certain um, uh, area, this is North Langley, and a lot of the stuff uh, runs off what we're doing with my North Langley, but you become expert at certain locations and people will ask you, where should I go for a cup of coffee in this neighborhood? Where should, what's the best school? Where's the best park? And you'll just get text messages, anonymous from the person sending it to you and anonymous sending it back where you can just help people out in your neighborhood and share information because through Foursquare, Local Mind determines you visit coffee shops all over the Lower Mainland, so you become the coffee shop expert in the Lower Mainland. Or if you're always visiting uh, movie theaters or local restaurants, you can become an expert in certain things and become very knowledgeable, and that's sort of Local Mind. It runs off uh, Foursquare check-ins. I'll hang out words. If there's any questions afterwards, I've got more time, so I will hang out afterwards and um, be happy to answer your questions. So if, you, if everybody liked what they saw, uh, if, you, if, you don't, if you're not a member of the meetup group, join the meetup group and say something about Michael Thorne and give him a little kudos or tweet it out or put it on Facebook. And anybody need a meetup group card, I'll, I've got mm -hmm. some here for the address. Thanks very much, Mike. Give him a hand. Hey, great. Oh, and one, one more thing just before you go. I'll add some things. Um, Jot Pro is the best stylus pen out there. I've tried a ton. Jot Pro is 20 bucks. Uh, one of the reasons why it's so great, it's got a really thin clear where it touches the screen. Um, it's it, it's amazing. I forgot to go through this stuff. Yeah. These little speakers are ridiculous. Uh, you can pick them up at Costco for like 15 bucks, but they open up and the sound that comes out of this is amazing. So if you're doing a presentation and you want audio and your iPad's horrible, uh, these are called XMI. They're like, I plugged this in. I got these from Christmas from my wife, and I plugged them in, and my mother-in-law <coughs> came up and told me to shut it down. It was too loud. <laughs> um, so those are really, really cool. XMI? Uh, those are wireless? You know, yeah, no, they just, this little cord comes out, and you just pop it in, and then, and then you can have multiple ones. I've got, you get two for like 30 bucks, uh, and you just charge them through, um, uh, USB and but they run power powers on now and it's it's super loud so if you're doing a, a presentation with audio um, this is a camera connection kit uh, you get these I think both for like 25 bucks this will put your card reader straight into your i uh, your iPad but this is the most valuable one this is a U, uh, USB to uh, to uh, iPhone or to iPad so when I shoot my white screen video here I connect this into here with the uh, with the wire that you have for charging. It sucks my photos and my video onto my iPad. Um, likewise, anytime you have a USB connected device, this blue mic, which quality is ridiculous. So if you're ever doing voiceover, like you're sending those disc replay, um, or you're doing a pod, we used to have a podcast. Uh, we're switching more to video now, but this will run directly into your iPad, and the quality is amazing. So these little tiny camera connection kits. Uh, or have a ton of value for running USB type stuff. When we do our um, videos, we use a lav mic uh, through a connection, a KV connection. Uh, it's 23 bucks. So lav mic straight into the iPhone, straight into the iPad, records the audio. I'm not separating them, syncing them up. It's recording it straight away. Uh, and we use a, a widescreen angle lens from HD hat. Um, they do ridiculously wide angle lens. Uh, that's really nice. That's about 160 bucks, but right now it seems like there's a lot more attachments to the iPhone that are a lot smaller that give you fisheye and wide-angle lens for about 50 bucks, and you can find some of those things that are a little bit more portable. Um, Glyph is a great thing to add your iPhone to to add onto a tripod. It's a little hang-on. That's called Glyph, but we have a, a plastic one that goes in and gets onto the tripod if we're doing videos and whatnot. We want to have a, a stable um, connection. So there's a lot of cool little add-ons that you can put to your iPad and there's more and more coming. Um, but this is definitely the jot knot is the pen that you want to have. Now I'm done.